me playing Bullet uh, and Blitz. So I'm going to start to just warm up a little bit with some Bullet games. Um, and then we'll go to Blitz. Of course, in Blitz I have much more time to um, discuss the openings and what I'm doing and things. And uh, let's hope things will turn out well today. I played a couple more games earlier today, so my rating has changed since you have last seen it. Um, still, of course, I, I need to play much more to get to a decent rating online. Okay, so we've got our first game. I like to start with the Pyrrhic or Karokan when I'm playing one minute game because, of course, we have not so much time to review all the openings and think about moments where you might forget <laughs> to play the, uh, the best moves. And so you have to try to remember everything really fast and if you don't do it of course things don't happen the way you want them to so that is the reason why I'm going to try to play some Karokans and um, Karokan and um, Pirk okay so I was trying to capture that one but it didn't work of course now we'll try to weaken a little bit White's position not very much unfortunately now we'll have some checks, c5, trying to open up the diagonal, good, now that was just an attraction, now the diagonal is open. Okay, he attacked my queen, we gotta go back. Ooh, did I lose a pawn? Yeah, I'm losing another one. Okay, certainly not the best way to start the day. But it's okay, we've got more time than the opponent and this is bullet, so... As much as it might seem rude, you gotta play for time. You gotta try to win the position on time if, if you cannot win it because of the position. So I'm gonna try to win as much material as I can. Play rook here. Try to make sure I'm not get, getting checkmated. It doesn't seem that way. I'm gonna capture this pawn. Okay. That was fast. Okay, I blundered earlier on, but then I managed to get back. Okay, let's play another game. Let's see what our opponent decides to do. E3, very strange. Let's do the same. Ooh, my pre-move didn't work. That's not so great. I don't know why I played a6. I didn't really need it. Okay, let's make some trades. Rook b8, threatening the bishop. Okay. Trades when you don't know what to do. Trade pieces. <laughs> That's exactly what I'm telling my students not to do, and I'm doing it. Hopefully, they are not watching my stream. Okay, I certainly don't want to trade my queen. Okay, let's play five. Not the pawn could have been captured. Okay, we'll trade those bishops. Let's put the rook on the d file. And I want to create a loft here. Aye, aye, aye. Okay, I don't want to trade. Let's keep the queens on the board. You know, it feels more interesting. There are some possible attacks that can happen not that big but something at least sure, I'll capture with the pawn I want to bring my knight to f3 Ooh, thank you just to be safe come ah I just gave away a piece that's not nice of me of course it's nice for the opponent Give some check, try to attack his rook. Ooh, I left my rook on prize. Gosh, this is terrible. I'm playing terrible chess. And also don't have enough time. Ah, I lost some time. That was not fun, certainly. It was about an equal game and then I messed up. 
Okay, this will be the last game that I'm playing, um, bullet chess, and then we'll get to three minute games. Trying to utilize this pin, create some double pawns. That's okay, at least you'll have double pawns and I have a nice majority on the king side. Possibly I'm threatening to double his pawns. Trade. Bring the rook on the open file. Okay, we don't want to trade there because the, the pawns would get nicely together. Okay, let's chase that knight. If he takes here, the knight will be trapped. So certainly he cannot do that. Now we'll double on the default. Oops. Oh, oh my god, what have I done? <laughs> ah, this is fun. Well, not so f much fun when you're actually losing the game, but okay. Let's try to do our best not to lose too badly. I, I, I feel so bad about this game. Hey, he wants to draw? No. Of course not. Why would he? Why would he want to join this position? Ah. Uh, okay. Nobody saw anything. Sometimes people are trying to sacrifice his. I knew it. This was a terrible game, do not even think about anything, let's play a 3 minute game, that's certainly more fun and I have enough time to discuss everything. Okay, so we're playing on 1900, I'm still rated kinda low, oh no, he aborted, okay. That was rude. Let's try again. Maybe this guy will not abort. Nobody wants to play against me, that's very strange. Okay, we will abort. We really want to play some games here. Twelve hundred? Are you serious? Come on. What kind of matchup was that? And he also doesn't play, okay. Let's try again. Three minutes. Search. 1800. Is he playing? Why isn't... Oh, okay, finally. Great, let's start with d5, knight f3, knight f6. Trying to play principal chess, well... He doesn't take the bishop out, let me take it out. E6. And development, guys. It's very important to finish up your development castle. Okay, we don't give away the bishop. We'll bring it to g6 and trade this bishop of white. That's my bad bishop, right? According to the pawns. So if we manage to trade it, it's certainly in our favor. Now, Let's try some a6, b5. He's going to play e4 eventually. And uh, we're not afraid because we'll trade and... And, uh, okay. Now there are different places you can actually go back with the bishop, so I'm going to choose b6. I could have gone d6 as well. Ooh, but with this pin here, I don't know if this doesn't work. I like this move a lot. Threatening to grab the bishop. Okay, I'm happy to grab that bishop. Now let's put the rook on the c file. Okay, well, let's finish our development. Then this rook will go to d8, the bishop will come to g6. Simple position. 
you don't need to create very much here. E5 would be another typical idea for these type of types of positions. It's uh, the reverse queen's gambit. And when white plays this, of course, they go e4, e5. But now we're black, so it's turned a little bit, and we go e5, e4. Okay, let's see how my opponent wants to. Okay, c4. That's certainly a good choice. Let's go bishop c7. I didn't want to cra uh, capture c4 to allow the knight trade. Now I'll take the pawn because. My pawn is controlling these two squares, so this knight will have to stay passive in d2. And although I have created an isolated pawn for myself, my knight will get to e4. This is a very nice square for the knight. And uh, we'll have potential sacrifices in f2, we'll have threats to capture in d2 and then f3. So let's see how my opponent wants to react in this position. Additionally, let's, let's not forget about this h2b8 diagonal. That's always a nice diagonal to create mating threats. Okay, I'll place my knight here. All I have to be careful about is this diagonal not to get mated in g7. And trust me, one time it happened. Okay, knight h2. Hmm. Not quite sure. Let's see. Trying to create some play on the queen side as well. Now we'll have to be careful about mates in the last rank. Let's trade. Okay. We have our loft. Now let's improve the position of our queen. I'll go and c5. Okay, that was in the plan to play bishop g6 long time ago. Mm -hmm. Maybe I was over confident about the position. Now a3 is weak. My king should be safe. I see. I see what you want. And let's offer a queen trade. And our knight should be certainly more active than that one. And we have knight c4 grabbing that one. Oh, wait. He just gave me a free knight. Certainly he didn't plan that. Okay, this is just a simple winning. Should be, unless I'm blundering. Right? We're going to grab the a pawn. He doesn't have enough time. We'll go with the A pawn. Okay. Nice. So I hope you enjoyed this game. Let's go on to play another one. Okay. My rating is getting slowly up. Seems okay. E4. Let's try some French. I haven't played French in a really long time. The advanced variation, okay, so this is quite standard, knight c6, and now black's idea is to start putting pressure in d4. Bishop d7. Castle, okay, and now in this position I'm going to go for knight mm, c or if, let's go for f6. In general, when there is a chain of pawns like this, you normally want to attack the basis of it to weaken the top, but in this case I've decided to do differently. So now I'm going to capture here. And now we're going to develop our knight to e7. Will go to attack the e5 pawn, which now has remained practically undefended by its own pawns. Now, white might want c4, but I'll play d4. Okay, no. 
need to worry about that. Finishing up the development, putting pressure on e5. Okay, I said that. I'll play d4. Keeping this bishop in between. I wonder if I can highlight it or something. No, no while we're playing. Okay. Now, if I capture this pawn twice, at the end there's going to be queen h5 check. So, I need to be on the look for that. I have knight f7 and then maybe... No, nothing. Okay, let's see. Let's see how bad I'm calculating. Okay. Queen h5, knight f7. Okay. So what does my opponent have planned next? Certainly it's not so pleasant to play this type of position because I'll be bound to stay to protect my knight for some time, but I think I should be able to survive, hopefully. Now... Um, hmm. Should be seven. Just to control this two diagonals, just to avoid any kind of knights entering somehow. Okay. Now short castle is certainly not in the plan, but with the knight in e4 he closed the action of the bishop so we can go g6. And I want to castle long, if allowed. He might go queen f3, but in that case there's gonna be some knight e5. Queen g4. It allows me to cast along. Now I want to play e5, open the bishop. I've got a pawn up. And um, hopefully I'll be able to convert. I don't have so much time, however, so let's see how this will turn out. Okay, let's try to. Uh, that doesn't work. Okay, let's get the f file. Okay. This one is protected. If needed, b6 is possible. I want to take the knight. What to do? Maybe not. Oh no 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 no. Ooh, that wasn't a good. Uh, that wasn't a good idea. Okay, e4. I want. I thought he cannot take it. Okay, let's go e4. Queen trade is fine if he wants. If not, we'll just retreat. Okay, well, we will take. And we will push one of the pawns. We'll push this one to keep his bishop closed. Oh no, I just blundered my knight. Oh my god. What have I done? I had a pawn up and I just blundered a knight. And this position is totally lost, but I'll keep on going. Never give up. Okay. Okay, his bishop is kind of dead, so let's make sure it stays that way. Okay, that I cannot do. Let's get the bishop kind of active somehow there. I don't know how. Okay, he sacrificed. Great. Now I'll give check. Next move. And depending on where he goes, I'll go bishop. Okay. Okay, we don't want to lose our bishop. Seems like I might be ended up ending up winning on time. Yeah. Oh my god, I blundered a pawn and a bishop in this game. I have to start playing these games early in the in the day. It's 10 p.m. here, but I have no excuse. Um, I believe this is going to be... I'm going to play two more games. So let's see who is willing to accept my challenge and play. Okay, we've got somebody. Okay, let's play d4. Knight f6. Is it gonna be a King's Indian or a Grunfeld? King's Indian. Okay. Knight f3. Bishop b2. This is just standard. Bishop g4 is not one of the main moves here in this position. So I'm going to make sure to grab the bishop. And here 
I should try to play a nice King's Indian with my bishop pair. Now this is a bad bishop, however it's it's good to have it on the board. You don't want to give it for the knight because now you're going to use this f4 idea to chase the knight away and then there's going to be e5 coming up. So that's very important to remember. Now this bishop in c1, it's never clear where it's going to get developed. Sometimes it, get, it goes out to g5, other times just e3. Here it seems like it's going to remain in e3 for now. He might want, in general, some f5 stuff, but currently I don't think they will work that well. Now I want to play bishop f2, maybe grab the knight, or knight e2 and trade it. I just need to make sure I'm not allowing any trades or captures that might be in black's favor. Okay, so he wants knight h5. But okay, now we can play knight here because there's no capture in b2. Of course, I anticipated my opponent would go for that. Let's trade. Ah, he took with the pawn. Very interesting. Very interesting here. It might be a, a good idea that I didn't consider. Now I want to go bishop d2 e1 and eventually grab that pawn. There's going to be a check here, but it doesn't bother me very much. I'll play king h1. Okay. This is our plan, and we should go for it. Now I also protected b2, so he can't grab it anymore. King h1. Now there's no way. Okay, e5. e5, e5. Well, if I take, you'll take it upon, and I'll have trouble in f4. So, let's grab g3. If he takes, of course, I take back. If he takes there, I'll take back with the bishop. Then with the queen. We've got opposite color bishops. Uh, certainly, his bishop is much more active than mine, but I have a pawn up. So, hopefully, I'll be able to develop some kingside attack and um, win the game. Mm, he didn't want to trade. Interesting. So he lets me have the bishop pair. Uh, well, that square might be trouble. I think so. Let's go keep bishop h2, you know? Okay. Uh, ooh, I should have moved my Let's go to B1. He takes, we take back, and then we'll try to play B3 and stabilize the position on the queen side. It's kind of standard for the Benoni. I see. Well, it's time for attack. Let's see where the knight is going. He took. Okay, we'll capture back with the rook. He probably will go. Oh, G7. Hmm. Okay, well, I'm taking the F file. Let's protect the E pawn. We might want some E5 eventually. Well, let's trade if we are allowed. Threatening D6. That was certainly a good move. One takes. Now E5. That's what I wanted for a while. You'll have 96, however, yeah. Mm. Mm -hmm. okay. I played this move to be able to retreat in case of anything, but mostly I want to bring my king, activate my king a little bit. And then I want, uh, well, let's see, maybe look here. Okay, let's try to make some push, one pushes. Get the e-file again. G5. Slowly advancing, you know. You don't need to hurry in this kind of rook end games where you've got a slight advantage. No, that wasn't the best move. Okay. 
That's okay. Ooh, really? Thank you. He should have played rook d6. Yeah. So, yeah, so earlier here in this position, um, after capture, capture, king g6 was the right move, and here I think he has to play rook d6. And uh, what's going on in the king pawn endgame? He cannot play king e4, yeah, so I'm, I'm gonna be winning it, so it didn't work, it seems. I thought he can play it. Well, yeah, it seems that this is winning, but um, you see, I want to go back a little bit in this game because it's a nice, nice rook end game here. So, white has a pawn up, but black has stayed active with this rook. He should have tried to get active with the other rook, but you saw, I made sure to control the e-file. And by keeping my rooks the way I did, I protected the c4 pawn, which is my only weakness currently. I mean, h3 is not really a weakness because my king protects it, and there's no way he can get to it. And I made sure I kept him passive with the other rook to protect f7. If I, if I uh, do that, I can slowly improve the position the way I did in the game, and um, this, this position should be winning by white. Of course, the best thing to do is to try to win the c5 pawn and then have two uh, protected pass pawns going for a win, but, well, that didn't happen, but something better happened. So I, I'm going to play a last game, and uh, we'll stop for today. Let's see what's going to happen. Okay, e4. What to do? Let's um, let's try the e5 for now. Let's see. What do we get here? Italian, Rui Lopez, Scotch, Scotch. Okay. There are lots of lines here in the Scotch, but let's go for this one, Bishop c5. And now let's go for this one. Trying to see what is white gonna do with the knight. T3 is one of the main moves here. And let's go knight e7. Cost. Castle doesn't work. Oh, yeah, it works. Okay, let's play d6, protecting our bishop, and opening up the other one to try to get it out. Okay, getting the d pawns doubled is not as serious, let's hope. Okay, let's trade the bishop. And develop it in the same time, of course. And now we'll try to get the d file. Also, these double pawns might be useful for black because I can play c4, which maybe I should play soon, and then try to bring my knight to d3. That's going to help create a really nice outpost there. Yeah, queen there is not doing very much because the knight is hanging currently, so they have to play some rook d1 first. Okay, b3. Okay, well, at least we'll get rid of our our double pawn, or should we go knight e5? I like knight e5 a little bit more. Because if they will push, of course, we'll have that spot, and if they don't, I can capture the next move. Oh, that's, that's very nice. Okay, now he's the one who has a weak pawn in c3. Okay, doesn't mean that we can actually grab it, but let's see. G6 for now. To have a loft is very important always. And now we'll try to push our pawns on the queen side. Okay, let's start with B5. B5 because I will threaten B4 and also not to allow some A4, hopefully. Oh, he played it. Go 
hopefully I'm seeing this correctly. It seems like B4 is a good move here. Okay, so... What are you saying? Okay. I see. Well, certainly I want the D file. Well, let's protect our pawn first, just to be safe. And now... Uh-huh, maybe I messed up. But I think I didn't, because, okay, now he wants to take... So... Let's try to get the C3 pawn too. Now I want to play rook D8, but does it really work? to try to get active on the second rank of course now there's rook b8 which my opponent very well saw and maybe tr trade will tr take that pawn don't have so much time so I better play a little bit faster now c3 is still weak okay. I'm going with the A pawn, I've got a past one. So let's get active here. Oh. Okay. Take. We've got two past pawns, guys. Let's hope this is winning. Ouch. That hurt. Ah, I had rook. Oh my god. Oh, thank you. <laughs> uh, my opponent disconnected. Hopefully it's not me, because sometimes it happens to me too, and it's not fun, I'm telling you. Let's hope he disconnected and not me. Okay, who? Okay, even if he didn't um, lose connection, of course it was winning, but I, I messed up here. This endgame is very interesting once again. Um, I thought it should be a simple win. Maybe, maybe it isn't, so I took two. Sorry, sorry, that's not what happened. He played e6, and I took an e2. Probably, I mean, that would have been something similar. Takes, takes. Yeah, so I play king f7. Rook a6, I played a3, which is good. And here after king f2, I should have given check first. Pretty sure that's what I should have done. c6. c6 is good when, you know, you don't need to worry that the king comes uh, very fast, attacks your rook, and then will win one of the pawns. But now I can just play rook c2 and and uh, ask white a question where is he going if he goes you know to somewhere to keep the pawn protected you know and I'm back to g1 or g3 i play a2 and then you know i can start pushing the c pawn as well slowly like by playing c6 so that i make sure i uncut myself to be able to bring the king but uh this way um if white tries to stay active i think i can once again play a2 and um Oh, this might be a troll. Because now g4 and um, he will attack my rook. But you know, that's that's alright. I just need to bring the king. I shouldn't play c6. Because when he attacks my rook, I can always try to go far away and give the a pawn and trying to get two of these so maybe i play rook b2 first and if he attacks me once again then i go rook f2 to grab that pawn and if he doesn't come to attack my rook 
in that case we'll bring king, the king to d2 can I make arrows here? I guess not or maybe with this this way? no well we'll play king d7 and then um, we'll slowly push the c pawn and and uh, the rook is bound to stay on the a file otherwise I'll promote so should be winning Okay, well, that's all for today. I really hope you enjoyed my video. And um, I'll be seeing you soon. Thanks. Bye.